Hi, I'm Maurice Dupre, and in this section, we're going to discuss numerical integration. If we can find the antiderivative of a function, then the fundamental theorem of calculus says to compute the definite integral, we just evaluate the antiderivative between the limits of integration. But suppose we're dealing with a function for which we cannot find an expression for the antiderivative. Then what we do is go back to the actual definition of the integral. Remember, it's a limit of areas of rectangles which approximate the curve. Well, in the case where the curve is always above the x-axis, the area in effect under the curve is the definite integral. And so it's approximated as areas of rectangles. Well, we can often do better if instead of trying to approximate the area with rectangles, we use trapezoids or even quadratic curves attached to pieces of the function. And so these yield methods known as the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule, which give much better, faster approximations to definite integrals than we would ever achieve if we had to simply stick to rectangles. Let's look. Here I have a picture of a graph of a typical function f between the limits a and b. And if we wanted to calculate the area under that curve, according to the definition of the definite integral from A to B, it would be the limit of approximating rectangles which we put underneath the curve. But now let's look and see at the picture here. What I've done is subdivide the interval from A to B into n equal subintervals. So each would have length delta x equal B minus A divided by n. And now we can see that to approximate the area under the curve, it's going to be much better to use trapezoids instead of rectangles. After all, no matter what rectangle I pick in here, well, it's going to be hard to tell whether I'm getting close to the area under the curve or just missing it. And so consequently, with trapezoids, we can clearly do better. This gives us a rule known as the trapezoidal rule. Here in this picture, the y values are the values of the function at each of these points in the partition of the interval. So y0 is the value of f at x equal a. y1 is the value at x sub 1, which is, of course, a plus delta x. y sub 2 is the value of f at the point x sub 2, which is, of course, a plus 2 delta x, and so on. So in order to actually compute the area under the curve with the trapezoidal rule, what it depends on is simply knowing that the area of a trapezoid is simply the average of the two heights you're seeing multiplied by the base. And so consequently, that leads to this formula, which I'll denote by capital T for the trapezoidal rule, delta x over 2 times the quantity y sub 0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 and so on out to 2y sub n minus 1 and finally plus yn. In effect, if I take the delta x and divide by 2, then each of the interior values, y1 through yn minus 1, is to be counted twice, whereas the endpoint values, y0 and y sub n, are counted only once. Now, even better than the trapezoidal rule is a rule called Simpson's rule. And here, the technique is to always use an even number of partitions. And so where we use an even number of partitions, we can take the best quadratic expression which approximates the curve. So for instance, if I were to look at the first two subintervals here, notice I have three points. Instead of using this broken line, I could say, what is a parabolic function or quadratic function which passes through those three points. Getting the one that passes exactly through those three points, we would expect it to give a better approximation to the curve, especially if it's smoothly turning, than simple straight lines. And so in order to do that, we would begin by calculating the area 
under a parabola which passes through three specified points. In other words, taking the interval for simplicity to be negative h to h, uh, giving a value y0 at negative h, the value y1 at 0, the value y2 at h, no matter what y0, y1, y2, and h are, when we calculate the equation of a parabola which passes through those three points, the quadratic expression which passes through those three points, and calculate the area, we find a very simple formula. The area is h over 3 times the quantity y sub 0 plus 4y1 plus y2. Well, notice what's happening now. The endpoints are appearing once, but the, that is the end values. But the middle value counts four times as much. This is a very interesting feature of Simpson's rule. And so when we do that with an even number of partitionings, here n is an even number for Simpson's rule. Delta x is still b minus a over n. Then Simpson's rule tells us that we should compute delta x over 3 times. We take the left end value, y sub 0, 4 times y1 plus 2 times y2 plus 4 times y3, and so on, all the way down the line, till finally we get 4 times y sub n minus 1, and then last, the right end value, y sub n. So notice, inside the interior, we can think of, since n is even, we can think of the first two intervals as really being that one interval like we showed in the previous picture. So there's the midpoint value. It counts four times as much. There's the next midpoint value. It counts four times and so on. Each of the end values counts once, but you see the right end value for the first pair of subintervals is also the left end value for the next pair, so it then adds up twice. So all the intermediate uh, interior endpoints count twice, the midpoints count four times, the first endpoint on the left, y0, the last endpoint on the right, just count once. So it kind of looks strange. Here these alternating points are counting somehow twice as much as the others, but Simpson's rule gives a very good approximation. Well, Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rule give very good approximations to definite integrals, even when we don't use very many subintervals. In fact, we can have very good formulas for calculating what the errors are. Let's look. Error estimates in the trapezoidal and Simpson's rules. If f double prime is continuous, and m is any upper bound for the values of the absolute value of the second derivative f double prime on the interval a comma b, then the error denoted capital E sub t in the trapezoidal approximation of the integral of f from a to b for n steps satisfies the inequality absolute value of E sub t is less than or equal to capital M times b minus a cubed all divided by 12n squared. Well, notice the b minus a will be fixed, and the m will be fixed once and for all as soon as the function is fixed. And so as n gets bigger and bigger, this denominator is going to increase very rapidly as the number of partitioning intervals goes up. In fact, it's going up here, you see, as n squared in the denominator. In other words, that's going to cause that whole expression to go to zero very fast. Well, let's look at a similar type of error estimate for Simpson's rule now. And that involves the fourth derivative. If the fourth derivative, f with the little parenthesis 4 superscript here, is continuous and capital M is any upper bound for the values of the fourth derivative absolute value, on the interval a, b, then the error capital E sub s in the Simpson's rule approximation of the integral of f from a to b for n steps satisfies the inequality absolute value of E sub s, the error, is less than or equal to capital M 
b minus a to the fifth power divided by 180 times n to the fourth. That 180 there is a whopping big number already. So Simpson's rule has a big advantage over the trape trapezoidal rule. And now notice we have n to the fourth power. So that n to the fourth power in the denominator goes up very rapidly with the number of steps. Another thing to consider here we're talking about the fourth derivative of f. Notice if I take any polynomial of degree three and differentiate it four times, I get zero. And so consequently, that m will be zero and the error will be zero. That is, and this is rather surprising. Uh, Simpson's rule is developed with quadratic approximations to the integral. And here it's turning out to give the exact value as long as the degree of the polynomial is less than or equal to three. Okay, so those are our approximation error estimates. Okay, let's do some numerical integration using the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule. Using the trapezoidal rule, A, estimate the integral with n equal four steps and find an upper bound for the error e sub t, an absolute value, that's the trapezoidal rule error. Evaluate the integral directly and find the actual absolute value of the error in the trapezoidal rule. Use the formula absolute value divided of the error divided by true value times 100 to express e sub t as a percentage of the integral's true value. And then basically we'll do the same thing with Simpson's rule. Using Simpson's rule, estimate the integral with n equal four steps and find an upper bound for the absolute value of e sub s, the error in Simpson's rule. Evaluate the integral directly and find the absolute value of e sub s. And use the formula absolute value of e sub s divided by true value times 100 to express the absolute value of the error as a percentage of the integral's true value. So the example we want to look at is the integral from 0 to 2 of t cubed plus t dt. And remember, n is equal to 4, so we have n equal 4 steps. And so that means the delta x, remember, is upper bound minus lower bound, 2 minus 0, divided by n, which is 4. And so delta x is simply a half. And so four steps, the values of the index k will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the t sub k, the actual values of the input variable for those indexes are when k is 0, we have the left end point 0. When k is 1, we have the right end of the first subinterval, delta x is a half, so it's at a half, and then a half plus a half for the second end point, and then a half plus a half plus a half, or three times a half, three halves for the third right end point, and then finally for the right end point of the whole interval, we have two. And so we evaluate t cubed plus t at each of these points, and I've made a little table here. The value at t equals zero of t cubed plus t is obviously zero. When t equals a half, we get five eighths. When t equals one, we get two. When t equals 3 halves, we get 39 eighths. And when t equals 2, we get 10. And so with that little table, it's pretty easy to put the values into the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule and compute the results. So for instance, for the trapezoidal rule, remember delta x over 2, the delta x is a half. So a half over 2 multiplied by, well, we have 0 for the left end point and 10 for the right end point, And then each of the interior values, the 5 eighths, the 2, the 39 eighths, they get multiplied by 2. So we add them up, multiply by 2. And that results in the trapezoidal rule giving us 6 and 1 fourth. For Simpson's rule, here, remember, we take the delta x, divide by 3, and then we have, starting off, multiply this by the sum of left end value, 4 times the next value, the 5 eighths, plus 2 times the next value, the 2, plus 4 times the next one was the 39 eighths, and plus the right end value of 10. And when we compute that, we get 
S equals exactly 6. Well, let's actually calculate this integral and see what we get. Because in this case, we know we can actually do it by the fundamental theorem of calculus. The antiderivative of t cubed plus t is simply t to the fourth over 4 plus t squared divided by 2. That's to be evaluated between limits 0 and 2. And so 2 to the fourth is 16. We get 16 over 4 plus 2 squared is 4, 4 halves. 16 over 4 is 4. 4 halves is 2, and we get exactly 6. Well, you, remi you might remember that uh, the Simpsons rule gave us exactly 6, whereas the trapezoidal rule gave us 6 and 1 fourth. So Simpsons rule hit it right on the head. Well, let's see why it is that that happened. Remember, Simpson's rule will always give the exact answer for any polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3. But let's look at the actual error here. Remember, our function is f of t equals t cubed plus t on the interval from 0 to t. And so to evaluate the error for the trapezoidal rule, we look at the second derivative, f prime of t is 3t squared plus 1. So f double prime of t is simply 6t. Well, obviously, the biggest that can be on the entire interval from 0 to 2 is the value at t equals 2. 6 times 2 is 12. And so the error, absolute value estimate for Simpson's rule says that when we have a maximum value for the second derivative, and the second derivative is continuous on the interval, 6t is obviously continuous, then we have the maximum value times b minus a cubed, where b is the right endpoint, a is the left endpoint, divided by 12n squared. Well, remember we have n equals 4 here, and so consequently, b minus a is 2, 2 cubed is 8, the maximum here, m sub t is 12. So we have 12 times 8 divided by 12 times 4 squared is 16, 12's cancel, 8 sixteenths is a half. Notice the error estimate for Simpson's rule is telling us that when we calculate the Simpson, the, the, excuse me, for the trapezoidal rule is telling us when we calculate this for n equals 4, the trapezoidal rule will have an error at most a half. Well, in fact, we know the actual error here is 6 and 1 quarter, which the trapezoidal rule gave us, minus the actual value of 6 is 1 fourth. So the actual error certainly is less than or equal to one half. What about for Simpson's rule? For Simpson's rule, remember, I'll call m sub s the maximum value of the fourth derivative on the interval 0 to 2. But since f of t is t cubed plus t, notice the fourth derivative is 0. That is, we have f double prime of t equals 6t. So f triple prime of t equals 6. And so the fourth derivative at t is the derivative of a constant 0. And so consequently, the error estimate for Simpson's rule says that an absolute value, that will be less than or equal to the maximum of the fourth derivative on the interval, which in this case is 0 times b minus a to the fifth power divided by 180 n to the fourth. And so here, that is 0 as m sub s equals 0. And of course, we remember that we got the value 6 for our Simpson's rule approximation, which was exactly the same as the value of the integral. So in particular, as a percentage of error, our error in the Simpson's rule case was 
On the other hand, in the case of the trapezoidal rule, the error percentage one-fourth over six, well, that's uh, one-fourth divided by six, which is a 24th. And so that's, uh, you know, roughly about 4%, a little over 4%. Well, the error formula for the trapezoidal rule involves the second derivative of the function, and once we find its maximum value on the interval of integration, then we can actually figure out how many steps are required in order to get a desired degree of approximation accuracy. Let's look at an example. What's the minimum n for the absolute value of the error in the trapezoidal rule to be less than 10 to the negative 4. In other words, giving us four decimal place accuracy here with the trapezoidal rule, and we want to apply this to the definite integral from 0 to 2 of t cubed plus t dt. And so, in effect, our function that we're dealing with here is f of t equals t cubed plus t. The derivative is 3t squared plus 1. The second derivative is 6t. And so on the interval 0 to 2, the biggest that can be is when t is 2, and obviously then the maximum of the second derivative is 12. So I'll say max f double prime equals 12, and call that m sub t. And so our formula for e sub t says that an absolute value that is less than or equal to m sub t b minus a quantity cubed divided by 12 n squared. And so in this case, we get our maximum is 12 b minus a is 2, 2 cubed is 8. Down here we have 12 times n squared. And so in order to make this less than 10 to the negative 4, it suffices to make this quantity less than 10 to the negative 4. We'll begin by canceling 12s. And so consequently, what I see is that uh, Notice 10 to the negative 4 is 1 over 10 to the 4th. So this inequality is the same as 8 times 10 to the 4th is less than n squared. Taking square roots of both sides, you'll see I'll end up with n. And so taking the square root of the left side, the square root of 10 to the 4th is 10 squared. And using uh, the square root of 8 from our calculator, we find that n has to be greater than or equal to 283. Now, notice this is a cubic polynomial. If we do this for the trapezoidal rule, we know the error is going to be 0 because in the corresponding formula for the error, in, in the, excuse me, in the Simpson's rule, we have the maximum of the fourth derivative here, and the fourth derivative is identically zero. So here, the Simpson's rule gives the exact answer, but it takes the trapezoidal rule 283 steps to get four decimal place accuracy. That gives you an indication of how much better Simpson's rule is than the trapezoidal rule in the case of these polynomials. Let's look at an example to see how many steps it takes to get our accuracy with the trapezoidal rule and with the Simpson's rule. Here, I want to see how many steps do we have to take in our approximation using the trapezoidal rule and with Simpson's rule to compute the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over s squared ds having error less than 10 to the negative 4. So our function here is the function f of s equals 1 over s squared. So f prime of s, well, this is s to the negative 2, so that's negative 2 s to the negative 3. f double prime of s is therefore negative 2 times negative 3, that's 6 s to the negative 4. Our third derivative, 
F triple prime at S is negative 24 S to the negative 5. And so finally, our fourth derivative at S is equal to negative 5 times negative 4. That's 120 S to the negative 6. Well, notice with these negative powers, as S goes from 1 to 2, the maximum will occur at S equals 1. And so consequently, we can say the maximum for the trapezoidal rule is the value of the second derivative when S equals 1. That will be 6. The maximum for Simpson's rule will happen again when S equals 1, and that is 120. So our error for the trapezoidal rule in absolute value is less than or equal to the 6 times b minus a. That's just 1. So 1 cubed, which is 1, divided by 12 times n squared. 6 over 12, that's a half. So we get 1 over 2 n squared. That's pretty simple. We want to make that less than 10 to the negative 4, which is 1 over 10 to the 4th. And so consequently, solving this inequality for n, that's easy to do. We get 10 to the 4th over 2 less than n squared. And so, well, taking square roots of both sides, we find 100 divided by square root 2 is less than n. And that tells us that n, for the trapezoidal rule, I'll call it n sub t, has to be greater than or equal to 71. Well, let's do the same thing now for Simpson's rule. The maximum value of the fourth derivative on our interval of integration is 120. So remember, m sub s equals 120. b minus a is simply 1. And so the absolute value with Simpson's rule is e sub s, an absolute value less than or equal to m sub s b minus a to the fifth power divided by 180 n to the fourth power. So here that's 120 times 1 to the fifth divided by 180 n to the fourth. We want that less than 1 over 10 to the fourth. So basically, we can solve this pretty quickly because we have n to the fourth here and 10 to the fourth here. And when we do, what we find is that for Simpson's rule, and this is amazing, the number for Simpson's rule only has to be greater than or equal to 10. How amazing is that? 71 for the trapezoidal rule, only 10 for Simpson's rule to get this four decimal place accuracy. Let's look at an example where we find how many steps are required to get accuracy with the trapezoidal rule and with Simpson's rule. Here I have the definite integral from 0 to 3 of square root of the quantity x plus 1 dx. So we want to make the absolute value of the error for the trapezoidal rule less than 10 to the negative 4, and for Simpson's rule less than 10 to the negative 4. In each case, we want to find the minimum n required. So our function here, f of x, that we're dealing with is f of x equals x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So let's start differentiating. f prime of x is simply 1 half x plus 1 to the negative a half. The second derivative of f at x is therefore a half times negative a half, or negative 1 fourth x plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. The third derivative of f at x is therefore negative 3 halves times negative a fourth, that's 3 eighths, times x plus 1 to the negative 5 halves. 
And so the fourth derivative of f at x is equal to 3 eighths times negative 5 halves. Well, that'll be negative 15 sixteenths times the quantity x plus 1 to the negative 7 halves. We have to figure out what the maximum value of the second derivative is on the interval from 0 to 3 in order to get the error estimate for the trapezoidal rule. And we have to find the maximum of the fourth derivative on the interval 0 to 3 to get the error estimate for Simpson's rule. Well, notice in each case here, x plus 1 is raised to a negative power bigger than 1. And so the maximum will occur when this quantity is minimum. That is, at x equals 0. And at x equals 0, we just have 1 to the negative 3 halves, which is 1. Here we have 1 to the negative 7 halves, which is 1. And so the absolute value of the coefficient in each case gives the maximum value. So I'll write the maximum value for the trapezoidal rule here for the second derivative is a fourth. And the maximum value for Simpson's rule here in the case of the fourth derivative on the interval 0 to 3 is simply going to be 15 sixteenths. OK, so we've worked out these maximum values for the second derivative and the fourth derivative for our function, the integrand, on the interval from 0 to 3. Let's review what our error formulas are for the trapezoidal rule, the absolute value of e sub t. We know less than or equal to the m sub t times b minus a quantity cubed divided by 12 n squared. For Simpson's rule, we want to look at the absolute value of the maximum m sub s, the 15 sixteenths, times b minus a to the fifth power divided by 180 n to the fourth power. So that means what we have to do is replace the b minus a by 3 minus 0 or 3. So there'll be a 3 cubed here, a 3 to the fifth here. The m sub t will be replaced by a fourth, the m sub s by 15 sixteenths. So let's look to see what we get. The absolute value for the trapezoidal rule error then less than or equal to m sub t b minus a cubed over 12 n squared. This quantity is now 1 quarter 3 cubed divided by 12 n squared. And we want to make that less than 1 over 10 to the fourth. Well, when we multiply out the n squared, multiply out the 10 to the fourth, and take square roots on both sides of the inequality, we find simply n sub t has to be greater than square root of 270,000 divided by 48. And that means n sub t, actually this will work out to be exact because we have 27 over 48 uh, times 10 to the fourth here. And so we can cancel threes. And this becomes the square root of 9 sixteenths times the square root of 10,000, which is 100. The square root of 9 sixteenths is clearly 3 fourths. And 3 fourths of 100 is 75. So the n sub t has to be greater than 75. And so the minimum will be 76. What about for Simpson's rule? In the case of Simpson's rule, we have the absolute value of the error less than or equal to m sub s, b minus a to the fifth power divided by 180 n to the fourth. And so remember, the m sub s is the 15 sixteenths now. The b minus a is still 3, so we have 3 to the fifth divided by 180 n to the fourth. That has to be less than uh, 1 over 10 to the fourth. And actually, this one simplifies quite a bit. That will say n sub s has to be greater when we rearrange this than 3 fourths 
times 10 square root 2, and that's approximately 10.6. Well, that means if, we, if n has to be a whole number, notice that means n has to be greater than or equal to 11. But now remember, for Simpson's rule, we must use an even number of steps. And so consequently, the n sub s equals 12. So for the trapezoidal rule, to get four decimal place accuracy, in essence, we need 76 steps. For Simpson's rule, only 12. Well, we've looked at the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule for numerical integration. There's certainly a lesson here. Simpson's rule works a lot better than the trapezoidal rule. In several examples, we've seen that on order of magnitude, it's taking the trapezoidal rule about 10 times as many steps as Simpson's rule. Well, in any case, now that you've seen these work, you might want to practice some on your own.